Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back into this Wednesday edition of the Five Star News. I'm Max Owens. And I'm Brady Chandler. And Max, this is our first show back since spring break. I'm taking you had a great trip down to Florida. Sure did, Brady. A lot of fun. We're back in school now. You ready to crank up this Wednesday show? We'll start off with some morning announcements. Today, we have Kieran Freed and Isaac Delk with the weather. Take it away, guys. Thanks, guys. Great job, as always. Now on to the news, and we'll start with some huge news that broke just before we left for spring break. Yes, the school announced our highest honor list, revealing the schools are valid Victorian and salutatorian. Our five-star news reporters, Jonathan Glover and Tipton Smart, talked to the students about their achievement earlier this week. Okay, so we have just announced our highest honors graduates for the class of 2023. Those are the students who have taken at least six AP honors or dual enrollment college classes and have a 90 average in uh, their academic classes. Um, so congratulations to those students. They'll be first in line at graduation and they'll have a gold tassel uh, that will distinguish them. And then of that group, of those highest honors, the student with the very highest average, uh, that's our valedictorian this year, it's Brooke Fairchild. And our salutatorian is the next person in line, the second highest average, that's Abby Bradford. So congratulations to all these students on all their hard work, and um, go Generals. Um, it feels pretty good. I've wanted it since freshman year. Um, I've always like thought highly of myself and tried really hard in all my classes to get good grades. So when I got this accomplishment, it, it really felt amazing. Hey, I'm Abby Bradford, and I'm the salutatorian of the class of 2023. Um, I think I've worked really hard um, this past four years trying to keep my grades um, above average. And, working hard to keep them on all A's. Um, I'm very proud of myself, and I did not expect this, honestly, but yeah. Congrats to everyone on that list. Definitely something to be proud of. Moving on now, and now that our 2023 spring break is in the books, we here at the show wanted to find out what some of you students and teachers did over the break. Here's five-star news reporter Silas Williams, Gabe Guffey, talked with some of them yesterday to get their views from spring break. So over spring break, I uh, flew out to California, to Anaheim, uh, to visit my brother. Uh, and it was my first time traveling alone, so that was pretty stressful. But once I got there, uh, we just hung out. And then the next day, we went into a flower field in San Diego uh, and took pictures there for Instagram and stuff. And then we went to Disney World, uh, Disneyland, rather. Um, and we went to an art museum in L.A. and just did a lot of uh, touristy stuff in the area. So that was a lot of fun. And it was the first time I've seen my brother since, like, October. So it was just really refreshing. Uh, so I went to New York. And that was pretty fun. I got to go to, like, a bunch of different museums and saw a Broadway show. And it was just really cool, like, walking around Manhattan and Brooklyn. And I saw a Yankees game, too. So we went to the Bronx. It was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. It it's really different, but it's fun. Spring break, man, I got a lot of my honeydew list done at home, but then for Easter, we left and went to South Carolina. I have a nephew and, and niece that moved from Oregon, and they're in South Carolina now, and it was nice to make the trip over to South Carolina and visit their new home and enjoy Easter, and we came home. Time to get a little quickie breaky here on the show. Yes. But we won't be gone long because after the break, we have sports. So grab your uh, drink and snack and then tune back in for Lauren and Johnny next. Well, Generals, if you miss a lot of things, you certainly do not want to miss this. Our General merchandise is having a huge sale, including shirts and sweaters. Well, it, get some other gear like our coasters and car stickers. So what are you waiting for? Get your Team Spirit gear today. Five Star Sports with Brody Irving starts now. 
Welcome into sports, everyone. Jonathan and Lauren here, and we're here to get you caught up with all things HHS sports. Sure are, Jonathan, and we'll start you off with Generals Baseball. Sure will, and our guys racked up a three big win streak over spring break and look to keep that streak alive Monday as Sonorville came here to the Taj. Could our boys get it done? Here's Max, Brady, and crew with the game recap. Well, it didn't go the way we wanted to for game one. Um, uh, we, we played three games. The first game didn't go, uh, obviously, the way we wanted, but uh, uh, we, we did do some things well that we can build on and hopefully uh, carry that over into game two and three, which will be over there on Wednesday. So, um, uh, But we faced a really good pitcher in the first game. We knew we were going to do that and see that. and um, Didn't disappoint. It was tough, uh, tough, tough going against him, but uh, um, did get into their bullpen a little bit. We got some confidence uh, against some of those guys there that they brought in afterwards. So um, just got to go down there and take care of the baseball, pitch well, and uh, uh, make the most of our opportunities and play clean. So uh, we'll, we'll have a good day of practice today and get ready for Wednesday. Uh, this normal game did not go the way we wanted it to. Uh, we had a bad first inning, but we kind of calmed down after that, gave up one of the rest of the game. and. You know, I came in, went three innings, uh, pitched pretty good, kind of happy with the way I went. They had a really good guy on the bump. He was throwing pretty hard, lefty. But, you know, I think we have a pretty good shot Wednesday at it. Um, so, yeah. Tough loss, but we get another crack at those guys tomorrow night down at Sonorville. The tennis now and our girls and boys team are down in Dalton competing in the region tournament. Both Coach Mathis' girls and Coach Green's guys entered the tournament play as the four seed, meaning they needed to win their first matchups on Monday in order to qualify for state. Yep, and both teams did that, but how did the rest of the matches go? Here's Coach Green with the recaps. All right, the Region Tennis Tournament wrapped up on Tuesday down in Dalton at Lakeshore Park. Uh, it kind of went by the way the seedings were for the boys. Uh, there was really only one upset. Cedartown knocked off Central Carrollton uh, in the semifinals, so it really had a, a little bit of a bearing on what it did for us as a uh, heritage. Uh, we ended up having to play Central Carrollton for third place, uh, and that was yesterday. And uh, they beat us in the regular season 4-1, and we came out yesterday, and we really need to play a, a little bit better than we're capable of playing to beat them, and they needed to have a little bit of a bad day, and that formula didn't happen. Uh, Central really played well. Uh, their number one seed's really talented. He got out to a 4-0 lead on Ke uh, Caleb Biddle. Biddle gets it back to 4-3, but then he got beat 6-4, 6-0. So uh, uh, that guy's really phenomenal. He's from Brazil, pretty tough player. Uh, beat us in straight sets there. Dario played a kid they call the Wizard, and he had his wizardry working against Dario again yesterday. Uh, he beat him in straight sets. I think it was 6-1, 6-2. And then Thomas Culpepper played a little bit better than he has been playing uh, in, the, in the first match that he played against their number three, but he still lost 6-2, 6-3. So they won all three singles matches uh, to give them a 3-0 win. Our doubles teams were kind of hanging around. They both lost the first set, um, but they didn't get to finish, so they were trying to make a comeback in the second set when the match was called off. So uh, congratulations to Central. They had a good team this year. They'll finish third. As for us, we'll play as the fourth seed in the state tournament. We really don't know who we play yet, but we're matched up against Region 8, which is one of the tougher regions in the state of Georgia for tennis. Um, so it's probably looking like a trip down to North Oconee or Flowery Branch or somebody that's even better than them, which, uh, you know, that's going to be extremely tough for us. Uh, we'll practice the rest of this week and get ready to go down there next week. So Monday we went down to Lakeshore or Park, sorry, Lakeshore Park, and um, for the region tournament. And first we had to play Northwest girls, and we did really well against them. We um, won three courts, and so we had a win from Lauren Mock at number one singles, Mia Callahan at number three singles, and then our number one doubles pulled out a great win for us there. Um, with Rachel Brown and Caitlin Hilliard. And then that afternoon, we had to play um, Central Carroll. Um, they're a great tennis team, and um, we fought as hard as we could, but lost to them zero to three. Uh, Tuesday, we went back down there and um, played the Cedartown Bulldogs. We uh, were in a close match with them as well. Um, our doubles lost pretty quickly, but our singles players were fighting. We were up on all three of our singles courts. And then um, our number three singles player, Mia Callahan, put up a great fight but lost in a 10-point tiebreaker, um, 12 to 14. She did awesome, though. We're really proud of all of our girls. Um, we ended up finishing fourth in our region. And so we just found out we'll be traveling to North Hall. I'm not sure when that is yet, but um, we're looking forward to that. 
fourth place for both teams. Good luck in the state tournament next week. And finally, it's time for one of our favorite segments here on the show. Yep, let's welcome in the BBB crew and see what trick shots they've been working on. Take it away, guys. Yo! What is good, guys? BBB. Might be a little chill outside, but we're on the grind! And this is the double crossbar shot. We're doing it right here. Yo, what's up guys? This is Bryce Quells from BBB and uh, me and Lyndon Barrett are doing some trick shots here. Bang! Young Roger from BBB crew, and this is the downhill, Patty Mahomes trash talk shot. Thanks for sports, you two. Now, let's get on to the entertainment. We got three segments lined up for you today, and our first segment features Nolan Kaler and Skylar Grant with their edition of Toon Talk. Hit, Hit it, it guys. guys. What's up, Toon Talk? It's Nolan Kaler. I'm Skylar Grant. And this is Toon Talk. And we're here with... Emma Pollong. And she's wearing... A Nirvana shirt. We're going to see if she knows what she's wearing. All right, Emma, what are your top three favorite Nirvana songs? Um, Come As You Are, Heart Shaped Box. The teenage one. <laughs> what is uh, it? Smells like teen spirit. spirit. Yeah, that. <laughs> Do you know the lead singer's name? Kurt Cobain. Okay. Have you ever been to a Nirvana concert? No. Of course you haven't. What's three facts about Nirvana? <laughs> yeah, what's three facts about Nirvana? <laughs> um, Kurt Cobain died, and Nirvana stands for Extinction and Disappearance, and it originated in 1987. So the second one is more of like a, not really a band fact, but I'll give it to you. How many number one hit songs does the band have? <laughs> All right, Toon Talk, that's it for this segment. What's up, Toon Talk? We're back with Skylar. I'm Nolan. And we're here with? Caleb Goldman. And he's wearing a? Rod Wave shirt. That's right, we're going to see if he knows what he's wearing. All right, what is the lead singer of Rod Wave? Uh, it's actually Rod Wave. What? Well, there you, you know three songs, you know three songs by Rod Wave? Yeah, I do. Uh, The Greatest, By Your Side, and Sunday, you know I'm And um, Youngin. Wow, Nolan, you got any questions? Yeah, Caleb. Okay. What's the three facts about Rod Wave? Uh, he's from Florida. Uh, he's hungry. And he's powerful. I really <laughs> love him. That was a I great agree. fact. I agree. Yep. You got any more questions, Owen? Yeah. Um, how many hits has Rod Wave had? Number one hits. Number one. Number hits. one hits. Uh, probably just one, honestly. I think just one. But we'll have to fact check that. Yeah, we'll fact check it. All right. But. And well, that was it. Well, I for one didn't know about that band, but what I do know is that we have finally reached the 10th edition of This or That. I know, it's actually insane. In this episode, we finally answered the big question. Here's a, a us with This or That. Roll it. Me? You? Whatever, just start it. I'm Isaac Delk. And I'm Kieran Freed. And welcome to the 10th edition of This or That. For the 10th edition. I can't believe it. We're on the 10th edition now. Honestly, it's insane. I gotta agree. For the 10th edition of This or That, we're finally answering the question everyone wants to know. This or that. And who are we with? I'm Austin. And I'm asking one question. Which one do you prefer? This or that? Uh, I gotta say that. And why is it the case? 
Because it's that. Like, you can't be... This can't be that. All right, and who are we with? Toby! And, uh, I'm asking you one simple question, Toby. This or that? This. And why is this? Because it's better. Why is it... Why is it just better? Because it has an S in it. And who are we with? Cole Denton. And Messi, one simple question. Which do you prefer, this or that? This. And why is that the case? This. All right, and who are we with? Uh, Miss Letgen. And I'm gonna ask you one very, very simple question. This or that? This. And why is this? This is better. And who are we with? Riley Crocker and Boy. I'm gonna ask you one simple question. Which do you prefer, this or that? That. And why is it the case? Because why this? Not that. <laughs> Alright, and who are we with? Gage. And I'm going to ask you one simple, very, very simple question. This or that? That. Why is that? Just cool like that. And who are we with? Carson. And I'm asking you one simple question. Which is better, this or that? I, I usually say that. All right. And why is it the case? It's just simpler. Jeez, you know, you know, that's a, that's one that honestly I don't think anyone can really answer. I mean, this is probably like one of the most unique things. But while at it, like that is like so widely known. So I'm mean, like, there really is no answer. This makes me feel so. It's amazing. I love this. But when it comes to that, I'm gonna have to say that. You know, even though I was voting for that, I was kinda hoping this would win. Now, on to the last segment of our show for today. Here's Dea Ramsey, Bella Santoyo, Nate Coyer, and Ollie Powers with their fourth edition of Make Life Better But Worse. Roll it. this out. What's the matter? I need to find out how dinner was made, you know, so I can start my own company and stuff. Well, the studs are placed in very particular spots where the cloth will wear out really quickly, but it actually makes the pants more durable. Uh-huh. Well, it wasn't quite what I meant. <laughs> the studs are called rivets, by the way. Glad I could help. Welcome back to Make Life Better But Worse, and today we have a certain topic to cover, but let's check the day real quick. It is... The 13th. Oh my god. Okay. Just to explain some things about what's happening there. Um, it's social, that, that date is associated with some bad days, okay, some bad times. And most importantly, a disease, or phobia, if you will. The name? Trichotophobia, to be more specific. It is, in fact, trichotophobia. Okay. We have it. You probably have it. The 13. <laughs> it's, a it's a controlling man. It's a, it's, a, it's a mess, dude. I can't take it anymore. Is it really the number 13? Or is it just fear of the end? We'll see you next time on Make Life Better, But Worse. Honestly, I probably would have been better off not knowing those facts, but it is good to know that this will wrap up this edition of the Five Star News. We'll be back soon, so until then, stay classy, Heritage. Heritage.